This product is an absolute game changer and in my opinion, one of the best RV innovations of the last few years. Today, I'm gonna to do a full review on the Moride safety rail, including, as an owner, my likes and dislikes. Now, if you haven't seen the other two videos I did, Will It Fit or the detailed install video, definitely check those out. I'll put a link in the description below for those. But today I'm focusing just on a review and my likes and dislikes. So to start things out, I think the Moride safety rail is pretty easy to install. I think it's something that the average RVer can do all by yourself. And this is what it looks like in the closed position. It's pretty sleek. Notice it's got a pretty low profile as far as how it sticks out from the wall. And then notice how you can open up your RV door without deploying or unfolding the railing. That's something that we couldn't do previously with this grab bar that most of us have had on our RVs. Now to operate it, to open it up, it's really pretty simple. You can see it's got a really strong magnet about two thirds of the way up on the railing and that is keeping it shut against the wall of your RV. And then it hinges all the way at the top. So to open it up, you're just gonna grab down here at the lower portion, give it a good pull to release that magnet, and then you just begin to unfold it. I find when you get about halfway, it's easier just to take your hand here on the center support, and that makes this extension slide all the way out. So it's really simple to operate. I mean, I think most people can figure this out without any instructions whatsoever. I'll give you some close-up views here of the actual handrail itself. You can see that it's got a satin black finish on it. I imagine it's some kind of powder coat finish. You know, it feels like something that will hold up and be very durable out in the elements. And speaking of which, I must say it's very comfortable to hold the profile of the handrail itself. It's really nice, especially up here on the thicker part, but even down here where it gets thinner, they did a great job of putting kind of an eased edge on the top and on the side. So it feels very comfortable to hold on to. And check this out, once it's fully deployed, you get an uninterrupted over 53 inches of continuous handrail from the bottom all the way to the top. Or if you measure how far it protrudes out from the RV wall, it's just over 42 inches. Which if we compare that to the old grab bar here, you can see that we only have about 27 inches of uninterrupted handrail, or you can see about 24 inches protruding from the RV wall. And that is over a 90% improvement here on the Moride safety rail, you know, almost double the length of handrail and how much it sticks out perpendicular off of the RV wall. Now in my last video, when I was talking about the qualifications for the safety rail, I promised I would answer the question, is the angle of the Moride safety rail adjustable or is it fixed? And so I can report back now and let you know that the angle is indeed fixed. It is not adjustable. And that is due to mainly this support bar that comes out here and hits the handrail perpendicular. And that is pretty much determining the angle of the handrail. But that's a good thing, I think, because that's what makes the handrail so solid and so stable. But you'll notice that the angle of the handrail is almost perfectly parallel to the angle of my stairs. And I've got my stairs level here. We're on flat ground, of course. And so they naturally designed it that way to be parallel to the stairs. For those curious, I've got the Moride step above version. So naturally it's gonna be almost perfectly parallel. But I would imagine even if you have the Lippert version, the solid steps, that angle is gonna be about the same. And for those curious, we can just pull out a tape measure. If you wanna get some measurements off of the top step here, if I put my tape right on the nosing of that top step and then go perpendicular up, you can see we're right at about 34 inches to the top of the handrail. And then if we repeat that and go down here to the last step right on the nosing, go perpendicular up, you can see we're right at about 35 inches. And so it's not perfectly parallel. Again, I think that could have to do with just how this handrail is mounted and the type of you know gap and clearance right here with the, the bottom of that handrail. But it's pretty much perfectly parallel. In fact, if I line up the camera to the stairs, you can see, I mean, there's just a little bit bigger gap here at the top of the handrail. Uh, compared to the bottom of the steps there. So the handrail is not adjustable, but they did design it to be parallel to the steps. But I mean, basically we've got a handrail here on our RV that is almost residential code compliant. You can see it's just under 36 inches there to the top of the railing. So it would need to be just an inch taller right at 36 to qualify as a code compliant handrail in a house. And of course it needs to be uninterrupted from the bottom to the top which it already is. 
Now let's go back in time for just a minute. In my previous video, I promised to rate the stability of the safety rail compared to the old grab bar. So before I take off this conventional grab bar, I'm gonna rate the stability on a scale of one to 10. 10 being the most stable, one being the least stable. Now you've all seen these before, you just lift up on them and then they lock into place. And you can see the amount of movement that I'm getting on this handle out here. And this is completely normal for this style grab bar. I would probably rate it right at a three out of 10 on how stable, I mean, it's better than nothing. You've got something to grab onto, but it does wiggle a lot. And I'm noticing most of the movement is right here in this little cup where it sits as opposed to the actual mount itself. The mount itself is pretty solid up against the wall, but in that cup, there's just a lot of play and a lot of wiggle. So again, a three out of 10 is where I would rate it. And now post install with the safety rail, I'd rate the stability or the wobble here at the end about a seven out of 10. Now, if that number surprises you or expecting it to be a little bit higher like I was perhaps, let me explain a little bit further because I realized after installing this, the real benefit is not how stable it is laterally down here at the bottom from side to side because it's gonna wobble when you're this far out from the sidewall and there's nothing down here to hold it. The real benefit is the uninterrupted length. You know, you've got over 53 inches here of uninterrupted handrail. Plus, to be fair, when you're putting your weight on the handrail, you're not going side to side typically. You're bearing down and pushing downward here. And that's where this railing really shines. I mean, it is rock solid because of this center brace right here. And you know, to be fair, going back to the wobble, even a residential railing in a house going upstairs, you know, the banister, they even often have a little bit of wiggle there right where the newel post comes down at the base of the stairs. And so it's only natural here where we don't have a newel post and it's kind of just more free and suspended that there's gonna be a little bit of wiggle down here. But again, I think the real selling point is the 53 inches of uninterrupted handrail going from the bottom all the way up to the top. And so with that, I'll transition to my likes here on the Moride safety rail. And first is, if you're not tired of me saying it already, it is the unobstructed handrail, over 53 inches of unobstructed handrail. And I think that is a game changer. And second like, and by the way, there's no hard feelings against the manufacturer of my old grab bar here, but the Moride safety rail is more than just a grab bar. It is a true and proper hand railing for your RV. Third like is it mimics a residential handrail. I mean, it's almost code compliant for a residential handrail and yet it's portable and on your RV here. Fourth like is, you know, when you're going up and down the stairs here with the Moride safety rail installed, it feels so much more like a residential staircase going up and down, especially going down. I mean, it's way more effective than just having the old grab bar. I also really like the smoothness of the actual handrail itself. They did a great job on the profile, like I mentioned. It just feels, you know, really natural when you're going up and down. I also really like that the handrail, when it's closed up like this, it doesn't block the entrance of your RV. You know, if you're on the road and you're all packed up and you need to get something out of your RV real quick, with the traditional grab bar, you'd have to unfold that grab bar to first get access into your RV. So I like that when the handrail is closed up, you still have full access to get in without opening and closing the handrail each time. And last like I'll touch on is the overall compatibility. You know, I think Mora did a great job in making the safety rail compatible compatible really with the majority of towable RVs out there. And not only that, but different stair systems, whether you've got the Moride Step Above or the Lippert Solid Steps, or even the Torque Lift Glow Step Revolution System, which I'll touch on more in a future video. But I really like that they designed this product to be compatible and universal with just really the majority of different RVs and stair systems on the market. Now, on that note, let me transition to sharing my dislikes. And I suppose some of these could be classified more as oddities. But the first one I'll share is the angle of the safety rail here is not adjustable. Like I mentioned before, it is fixed. And I'm kind of being a little bit picky here. I don't think this is gonna affect the majority of RVers, but suppose that you don't have the Moride Step Above Steps or the Lippert Solid Steps. Suppose that you have the Torque Lift Glow Step Revolution stair system instead here. And for those not familiar, I'll throw up a picture of what that looks like. But basically it's different than these more common drawbridge steps that swing out and that it deploys almost like an accordion and kind of folds out here. And the advantage of that torque lift glow step revolution system is that if you're at a campsite or even a storage area here like I am where you don't have the clearance 
to swing out those steps or maybe there's a timber or something in the way, an obstacle. Then with the torque lift glow step revolution, you can deploy the steps at a steeper angle. So they don't always have to fall in one location like these drawbridge steps. So suppose that you're at a campsite and you've deployed those steps at a steeper angle because of an obstacle. And then you want to come back and make this handrail match the angle of your stairs because they're steeper. Well, you can't because of this support being fixed here. So my thought would be what if on perhaps a version two, they make this support pole here telescoping so that it has some adjustment where you can go in and out and that would in turn change the angle of the handrail. So I don't know, again, I'm being pretty picky. I don't think this situation is going to affect a lot of RVers, but let me know what you think about that change in the comments below. The next dislike I'll share has to do with the end of the railing here, and you can see it falls right at about 43 to 44 inches and it is exposed metal. You can see they did round off the edge of the metal here, but it's still exposed here. It's not super sharp, but what I'm thinking here is, you know, as RVers, we know there are things on the RV that you can bang your head into and do some serious damage. You know, one time I banged my head as I bent over into this little plastic doorstop here, which was, it seemed like it was razor sharp out of the factory. So I had to round it off so it wasn't so sharp. But then I'm thinking back to my last fifth wheel, I had a front living room floor plane with a slide up here in the front and it stood out. It was like the perfect height to hit somebody that's over six foot tall. And you would think even after a year of owning it, you would know to avoid that and not bang your head. But I remember even over a year after ownership, I whacked my head so hard on that slide trim, it caused just a huge cut on my, my head. And so what I'm thinking is here with the end of this railing is, again, about 43, 44 inches. What if you have a child that is about that height and they're approaching the stairs and they're just not paying attention. They certainly could grab the end of this with their forehead or the top of their head. And like I said, it's not super sharp, but I mean, it still is metal that's exposed. It certainly could cut and do some damage there. So, you know, maybe more I could come up with a, almost like a silicone end cap or something to put it here and soften the blow. If someone that height did bang their, their head into here, it at least wouldn't do as much damage. Maybe that's something they could add as an accessory or even factor into a version two of the product. Now, I already know what you're thinking. Just put a pool noodle on the end of the railing. That'll solve your problems, right? No, thanks. Another dislike I'll point out is that you do have metal rubbing on metal every time you open and close the railing, the way this inner piece slides into the outer. And like I mentioned before, this finish seems to be very durable, so hopefully it'll hold up. But I do wonder over time if we'll start to see some wear and tear on the edges, because naturally when you have metal rubbing against metal, you know, it's only inevitable for that finish to get worn down. Now on that note, I will point out an oddity of sorts that I noticed during installing, and that is a small, almost like a nylon six inch wear strip fell out between the two pieces when I was installing it. And I didn't quite catch where it was before, but it had some adhesive. In fact, I'll try to show you a close up of what that piece looks like. It's pretty dark here, so if I can't get you a good angle, I'll throw up a picture. But basically it was like a half inch wide by six inches long and almost looked like a nylon wear layer that had adhesive on one side and nylon on the other. And my thought was maybe Moride intended for that to stick to the inside here of the railing so that when you open and close the railing, there's a wear strip, a wear layer of sorts inside here to protect the metal rubbing against metal. So again, I didn't catch where that strip was before, but I'm assuming that it was supposed to go right here and separate the two pieces. And if that's the case, I'm glad at least they were thinking of something to prevent that metal rubbing against metal. But maybe that wear strip could be even longer. You know, maybe it could go the full length of the railing and maybe be mounted in there in a way where you wouldn't have to worry about it falling out like it did in my case. So again, I'm being a little bit picky, but just wanted to point out that oddity that I noticed. Another, I guess not really a dislike, but just something to point out is that with this railing, because it's replacing a different railing system that most of our RVs have, you know, with the conventional grab bar that has the two anchor points, you're going to have all this metal here. And in my case, my railing went up so high that I had to use this extension piece. So you're going to have all this black metal that's going to be mounted on your RV to cover up those old holes. And you know, it's not a deal breaker or anything, but it certainly I think would look more clean if it didn't have all that metal up there and perhaps was a little more open in between the two mount points there. 
I would imagine that they're probably working on a more, I guess, OEM version of this particular product where for you know new RVs that are being manufactured that have never had a railing system installed before, you know, maybe it just has a, an anchor point down here where it's mounted and then all this is open and then just enough to catch the little magnet over here and then going up and then it stops. I would imagine they're working on something like that for OEMs that looks just a little bit, you know, cleaner on the RV, but that's just something to factor in that you are gonna have that black bar running up all the way, perhaps in my case, a good 12 inches or so above where the handrail actually stops. And again, that's to cover up the holes from the old grab bar. Last dislike I'll mention is pretty minor, but it has to do with the price point of the Moride safety rail. So I paid just under $200 to have this shipped to me. And in my opinion, that was just a touch on the pricey side. I think I was expecting it to fall closer to 150 all in. You know, when I think about conventional grab bars, certainly they're a different animal, but typically they're, you know, 30 to $50 shipped. And so I was expecting this being a more enhanced version to fall a little bit closer to that 150 price point all in with shipping. But let me know what you think in the comments below. I mean, this certainly is a unique product. It solves a problem that we have as RVers. And so for me, it's not a barrier to entry. I certainly would pay that same price over and over again because this product is so unique and there's nothing else like it on the market. But, you know, maybe I was thinking this first version would sell for about 150 and then maybe a year from now, they would come up with a version two with some enhanced features and maybe that one would sell for closer to that $200 price point with shipping. But again, it's not stopping me from buying this product. <laughs> certainly would do it all over again. So my conclusion on this product, and I'll just reaffirm again that I am not affiliated with Moride in any way. I did have to buy this handrail with my hard earned money. But my conclusion is this is 100% hands down the best handrail on the market for the majority of towable RVs, especially ones that have, you know, three or four steps going into the RV. I mean, I think Moride absolutely knocked it out of the park with this design. I think it's one of the best RV innovations in the last decade. And I'd almost put it on the level on par with the solid steps, you know, coming to the market. I think that Moride's gonna sell a ton of these, especially once it goes OEM and manufacturers start putting them on RVs from the factory. And I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, maybe there's a version two of this product within a year or two. Well, those are my candid thoughts on the Moride safety rail, but do me a favor, if you'd like to see this handrail come on your next RV standard from the factory, go ahead and tag your favorite brand in the comments below and let them know that you'd like to see this come as a standard option from the factory on your next RV. I think that'd be really helpful to the different manufacturers out there to kind of gauge the interest level. And if you like videos on RVs and trucks, definitely hit that subscribe button. As always, thanks for watching.